Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders. Super excited about today's episode. Today we're going to be looking at this awesome species, the Speckled King Snake. It's the Introducing Series, Episode 45, Lampropeltis Holbrookii, or Holbrook's King Snake. A stunning and adaptable king snake from central and southern United States, previously considered a subspecies of the eastern chain king Lampropeltis getula getula, and its triomial name before reclassification was Lampropeltis getula holbrookii. Again, this is a species that's had some work done with it, and they've decided that it's been elevated to its own species specific status. So now it just has a binomial, which is Lampropeltis holbrookii. This snake hails from eastern Texas where it integrates with Lampropeltis splendida which is the desert king snake eastwards through Louisiana and Mississippi to western and central Georgia where it naturally integrates with Lampropeltis getula the eastern chain king to the south and Lampropeltis nigra the black king or eastern black king to the north. As we track northwards through the range this also includes Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska southern south dakota southern iowa and southwestern illinois so a huge range and that huge range has obviously meant that this species has had to adapt to a number of biomes and habitats they are known to occupy everything from coastal dunes to marsh margins upland plains canyons woods and farmland in cooler parts of their range they will have to brumate this is a tough snake and in the northern part of its range which we'll cover later in, uh, in the climate data it takes a kick in uh, pattern is variable and as one would expect over such a huge range with the margins blurred where other previous subspecies overlapped with this species so we can see these cross hatchings on this uh, map I found online and then this is one that we took from uh, TFH's King Snakes and Milk Snakes which has got slightly more defined uh, outlines but to be honest the, the integrates are quite obvious and current uh, research by Burbrink suggests that actually the these continue to occur all the way down here um, independent of the presence of the Desert King which is a uh, Splendida. Um, so the most sought after animals are from the Mississippi lowlands west of the Mississippi. These animals are uniformly gloss black with a near perfect yellow dot in the centre of each scale. Example one. Beautiful. These are truly breathtaking animals. Other areas of the range see the loose arrangement of saddles uh, with more irregular dot work, such as the animal I'm holding. Uh, but uh, born with saddles and the centre dots appear over the first 12 months or so and quickly diffuse the once clear saddles. This tends to be a smaller king snake, similar to the desert king snake in captivity, even though they're quoted as reaching sizes of upwards of 180 centimetres, which is 6 feet, the vast majority will remain between 3 and 4 feet in length. And whilst they can attain mass as they get older, they never quite reach the girth and chunk of the Florida Brooks and Chain Kings. In captivity, they pose very few problems. This is a hardy, wonderful species. Uh, the only time that temperament or territoriality may play a part is with youngsters who are threatened by the idea of being interacted with. Avoidance techniques may include tail rattling, fast whipping of the body, essing up of the body and bluff strikes. Once in the hand, tail vibration may continue and it isn't uncommon for them to evacuate their bowel. But all of the above is pretty much standardised baby king snake behaviour. Nothing uh, specific to this species. I could be saying this about Cali kings, uh, Mexican blacks, any of them. They all vibrate their tail as babies and pee on you because they're scared, petrified. Uh, and people seem to think that it's aggression. It's not. They're literally shitting themselves with fright. So, you know, you want to bear that in mind when you're next holding your baby snake and a bit of compassion, you know? Um, it's, it's, this behavior is nothing to worry about. This is usually short-lived, and along with the desert king snakes, the speckled king snakes is easily the most well-behaved of the previous list, previously listed Getula complex. Coupled with their slightly more modest size and build, they're also less likely to intimidate novice keepers when adults. Husbandry is pretty much straightforward, and the keeper could use either a 36 by 24 by, say, 18 tall vivarium, which would be 90 by 60 by 45 in new money, or a 48 18 18, which is 120 by 45 by 45. Um, some keepers, of course, may choose to go bigger, and that's fine. You know, we're operating to a, a workable minimum 
in these videos. There is no upper limit. Um, uh, in budget setups, uh, heat could be provided by a heat pad and an on-off stat, but much more preferable would be to use a ceramic or CHE, which is a non-light non emitting heat source, and they're very powerful, but we can couple them to a thermostat to bridle them and hold them at the right temperatures, and they, ask, they last for a really long time. Um, because the ceramic heat emitter is non-light emitting, photoregulating opportunities could be provided by a small UVB strip such as the Shade Dweller from Arcadia or some of the new LED spot lamps that are on the market which are 6500 Kelvin and essentially the, the full spectrum which offer a lovely clear bright white light, not the blues of some of these UV tubes that are on the market. A basking area of 30 degrees Celsius is perfectly fine. Uh, and then a cool cool end of between 22 and 24 degrees Celsius is, is, is fine as well. Nighttime basking temperatures can be lowered to the cool end temperature of 22 to 24, with the cool end night, night temperatures dropping to between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius. The snake will be able to digest its food and it will be perfectly happy at these temperatures mooching around its tank. King snakes have relatively small mouths. And owing to be being snake eating specialists or ophiophagic, um, they have a, a, a predilection for smaller prey. They may try taking larger prey, but this can get stuck and it can cause problems. So say, for example, you have a corn snake of a certain size that could take large mice, uh, a speckled king of the same length may only want a medium mouse at most and pr maybe even prefer to take a two or three small mice uh, it's, it, you're going to have to work with the individual to work out what they want to do. Some individuals, of course, will book the trend and make a liar out of me. But the simple truth is we don't want to overface them. Obesity is a clear and present danger with all king snakes, such as the gusto with which they accept food. This can on occasion make them a bit derpy when it comes to entering their vivarium because when that door slides open, that means food, right? And they just jump at your hand. Uh, they usually really realise the error of their eyes and release you from their grip. Thankfully, king snakes only have tiny teeth. It's like the suck in your thumb. Uh, and it's most amusing being constricted by a snake that would struggle to swallow your little finger. With patience and regular handling, kings become totally tame. And over the years, the speckles that we've maintained at Snakes and Adders have been some of the very tamest and compliant of all king snake species um i don't think that i've ever been bitten by a speckled i mean there's always time yet but they're just so chilled out and laid back it's awesome you know this little albino you're just a cracker aren't you aren't you beautiful um so where are we uh so yeah the, the most laid back of all the north american kings uh Southern locales may not necessarily need to brumate in the wild, but northern locales would need to hide for a protracted period of time. We tend to hedge our bets in captivity and offer a relatively shallow brumation, uh, and a couple of months down at 10 degrees Celsius is perfectly fine. Snakes would not be fed during this time, and a small amount of activity may still be seen. It's surprising just how active snakes maintain, uh, stay even at cooler temperatures. Uh, this period uh, uh, would only need to plateau at between six and eight weeks and you'd have three or four weeks ramp time up and down. You never just drop a snake into brumation. You have to take your time um, and the animals would not be fed during this time. Keep your males keen and don't offer masses of food post brumation because it can send them off the boil when it comes to breeding and females you will feed heavily. They need the fat stores for egg production. Copulation will soon take place. Males can be very physical and grab the heads of females uh, and twitch and ride on their backs so it can look quite horrific but there's nothing wrong so don't panic 8 to 18 eggs are deposited 50 to 60 days later and these can be incubated at 28 degrees celsius using a mix of vermiculite to water at a ratio of 4 to 1 incubation temperatures generally anything between 28 and 29 degrees celsius is fine uh, and hatching usually occurs between 55 and 65 days Babies can be reticent to feed at first. They are somewhat smaller than the coastal kings on either side, um, but they will kick in and they have reasonably large yolk sacs upon uh, hatching out of their eggs and they need to use those yolk reserves first before they want to uh, feed. They may well shed before they even kick in feeding uh, and this is all normal. Don't panic. It's 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 okay. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Um, so, yeah, just what an ace snake 
Um, I coveted this snake like mad when I was a kid. Uh, never got the opportunity to keep any. It was always Cali's or Florida's. And then, you know, I was probably maybe even just before I took the shot, maybe when I was about 20, 21, um, I had the opportunity to keep some speckles and just fell in love with them. So absolutely beautiful. Ideally, I would have preferred to have used the natural form, but beggars can't be choosers. They're not a snake that we come across all the time in the UK. And even with all of our connections at the shop, we still don't get them with any real regularity, uh, which is a crying shame because actually, for, for my money, they're the best of the North American kings. Maybe them and the Desert Kings. I do have a soft spot for Splendida as well, which is also a fabulous snake. And we'll do a video on them when we get one. So now we'll have a quick look at the climate data. Because they've got such a huge range, I didn't want to just pick one or two places. So I'll run you through the, the different regions we, we have. From the, So we're working from the south, from the south across, and then up and around. So we've got Houston, Texas. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Jackson, Mississippi, Columbus, Georgia, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Little Rock, Arkansas, Wichita, Kansas, Columbia, Missouri, Omaha, Nebraska, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Davenport, Iowa, and Springfield, Illinois. So, yeah, quite the range. And we've got a real spread, and you can there's a massive difference between the summer times higher the southerns with like you know your peaks at 34 degrees Celsius to our northerns who are peaking at sort of the, the 28, 29 mark, you know, so the five degree divergence in peak summer temperature. Um, and then obviously your night times again vary from the relatively clement Texas, where their, their lowest temperature at night is eight degrees on average to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which in January hits minus 13. So you can imagine just how deep into fissures and cracks and underground the speckled king snakes from that region would have to go. So what we did was we took the average daytime high, average nighttime low, plotted them out over the course of the year, and we get our standardized arc with a peak average of 30 degrees Celsius. And then this degrades relatively rapidly um, and using the average temperatures, we, as we've said in the video, it kind of works out on paper as well, that six to eight weeks, we've got maybe eight or 10 weeks where it's 10 degrees or less during the day. And these animals would be asleep during that time. This didn't paint enough of a picture because of our spread north. So what we decided to do was show our, our um, median daytime high and nighttime low, but also the lowest nighttime low, the highest nighttime low, the lowest daytime high and the highest daytime high. And we then tracked looking at the northern range in particular, which is Sioux, Sioux Falls, Wichita and the lowest temperature range. And they, those animals from that region would potentially be uh, brumating for five months of the year. So there is a real swing on what the animals would require, depending on which locality they came from. Because they're so adaptable, like we've said, um, you know, they, they, they will adapt to whatever conditions are provided pretty much. They're uh, essentially bomb proof at minus 13. That's pretty serious stuff that's starting to rival things like the black rat snake and uh, the fox snakes and even the Russian rat snakes, uh, although not quite as harsh. Uh, it's just such a fantastic snake. We don't see enough of them in the UK. I know in the US they're kept in, mu in much wider uh, numbers and we're very jealous. Uh, and we're a UK based channel, so we cover the things that you sometimes maybe take for granted. Um, definitely do your research. Don't miss out on the opportunity. If you get offered a speckled king snake, jump on it. Not only will it be gentle, it will dispel so many myths that you've probably heard about kings, which will be more to do with the Mexican blacks or Callies, how they're just aggressive or whatever else. These guys invariably are totally laid back. They're a fantastic choice of pet snake. We'll be back with more videos soon. Thank you again for all of the ongoing support from me and Paul. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Cheers.